Hi, and welcome to Studio 411. I'm your host, Larry De Silva. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, we have a marvelous uh, show today. Uh, we have a guest that uh, uh, has a career that uh, is spanned seven decades, believe it or not, and uh, has included appearances in uh, dozens of stage productions, television shows, feature-length films. Uh, she's an actress, a comedian, uh, also a musician, which I didn't realize. We'll find out more about that as we speak with our guest today, joining us uh, from California, uh, the lovely Kay Ballard. Kay, thank you for uh, joining us on Studio thank 411. Very much, Larry. There you go. Lovely. And, I, well, and, and we, we, may, we may have a, uh, a surprise guest. We, uh, your, your dog may make a cameo at some point during the program. Exactly. She may do Appearance. There you go. So, Kay, tell me now, uh, uh, seven decades, uh, uh, we, we had a guest recently, I don't even know if, uh, if you know the gentleman, a musical director, uh, composer Don Trenner was on the show, and like you, he, he, is, uh, he is also uh, uh, passing his uh, octogenarian phase, so... Uh, oh. And, uh, I'm uh, saying how old I am. No, no, I didn't. It, I just, I know you had a birthday recently, so yes, belated happy birthday. yesterday. There you go. There you go. Um, the but, 20th. But I just think it's, uh, it's marvelous that, uh, uh, like Don, yourself, and, and a few others that we've had the privilege of speaking with, uh, again, are, are still so vibrant and active. Uh, what, what's your secret to long life? Well, just being happy. There you go. There you go. Uh, speaking of happy, there's a happy picture of a young Kay Ballard. We have a, a, your baby picture here. Now, this would, this, <laughs> this would, this would have Bad been back baby. in uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, back in the day. And uh, uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your your uh, family: mom, dad, uh, brothers, sisters. I had a wonderful Italian first first generation Italian American family, and I'm very proud of them. I mean, they they, they taught me responsibility. And they taught me, you know, you make a commitment, that's it. There and I go. believe in that. Now, born Catherine Gloria, uh, uh, correct me if Bellata. I'm wrong. Uh, Balata. Catherine Gloria Balata. Balata, yeah, okay. Daughter of uh, Italian immigrants. And uh, again, uh, it, it says here that uh, by the age of five, you were, you were uh, struck with the uh, entertainer, <laughs> uh, entertainment bug. Is that correct? That's right. And uh, what what was your first uh, what was your first uh, uh, experience? Were you in like a play in kindergarten? Oh no no no! At five, I was just entertaining the you know oh, the household. Oh, around the house, you were already you were already holding a I, command performance I was, there. That's right. I would you know imitating everybody I saw on the screen. Now uh, there, there's an image we're going to show in a little bit, and I'll I'll, I'll point uh, it out to the audience, but. Uh, I was looking at the notes, and it was funny. While I was doing research for your appearance, I thought of this this celebrity, and then I read, her, you know, her name in the notes. But there's an image of you. I'm going to assume it's probably from the late '40s or early '50s, where you very much reminded me of uh, Martha Ray. Was she someone that uh, I adored Martha Ray and Judy Garland and Bee Lilly? So you see, I was cursed with taste right at the beginning. There you go. Um, what, what were some of your, uh, uh, from all genres, I mean, it could have been your grandmother, grandfather, what were some of the influences in your life, uh, both from an entertainment? My and mother a, and yeah. my grandmother. Yeah. And how about now, as far as um, you mentioned a couple already, when you were getting into the business as a, as a youngster, because you were in your teens when you really uh, started right. getting into I the business. I was 12 when I yeah. formed on radio and Duke Lidyard's showboat. And that was on a local uh, TV station out of Cleveland? That's right. There you go. There you go. Um, now, it said uh, uh, in uh, 1941, you were in a USO stage production of Stage Door Canteen. And then after that, you set out on your own, correct? That's right. There you go. Uh, I always knew what I wanted to do. Wasn't I lucky? People get master's degree today, and they don't know what they want to do. Well, you, that you, always makes me laugh. You took the quote right out of my mouth. Matter of fact, uh, it, it, we'll have the uh, director here show that image, the image of uh, Kay uh, back uh, in her early days, and with uh, looks like you have a um, a shower cap on, and uh, and you have a, an expression that looks very, very much. I would have thought it was Martha Ray. Honest to goodness. Well. I love Martha Ray, and I think it helped me and hurt my career a little. 
because they did always compare me to Martha Ray. Mm-hmm. And I, I was I was flattered because she was wonderful. So there you are. There you go. You mentioned before uh, one of the lucky ones, you were a, a exact quote. People get master's degree and they say, I don't know what I wanted to do. I always know what I wanted to do. Isn't that nice? Unquote. Isn't that funny? And it's it, true. It is. It but, is. you know, it's interesting. I was in Chicago playing at the Black, Black Hawk Theater, Blackstone Theater, in Three to Make Ready. And that's when I got to know Paul Lynn, Charlotte Ray, and Sheldon Harnig. And I went to see the WAM News show. And they were so jealous because I was working in the theater. I said, listen, I'm in the college hard knocks, so there you are. Some uh, impre- impressive company. I know Charlotte uh, is still uh, still with us as we tape. And uh, I, I think... Sheldon the, Harnick certainly is. Yeah, and uh, the last year or two, uh, Charlotte just came out with a memoir herself. And you know, the funny part is Sheldon doesn't remember, but I bought his first piece of material. Oh, you did? <laughs> and I, you know, it, it was expensive at the time, but I thought it was so funny. It was about golden earrings, and I said, now that my ears have turned green, you know, and it was very funny. There you go. Now, uh, in those days, because obviously you, you um, uh, got a job in, in 43 uh, working with the uh, the legendary Spike Jones and his That's orchestra. right, and I learned a lot you working were... with Spike Jones. First of all, I learned that, you know, Oh, not to be crowded. <laughs> sure. Because we've sold out every show. And, you know, after you get into the real world, it's a, a lot different. We're looking at an image actually from 1954, Kay Ballard on the cover of Life magazine. Very impressive. I love, I think it was like 20 cents for that, that issue. That was when uh, in the, uh, what, 1953, 54, you were in the uh, Broadway show uh, Golden Apple, correct? That's right. There you go. A very, very good Funny part is, the first magazine I was in was Look Magazine. There was a segment called Mystery, a mystery, a mystery show. And I, Spike Jones says, you can be in this, but you're going to play the corpse. <laughs> so there I was on the floor <laughs> playing the corpse in that. Now, I, I have to ask, because I remember uh, this gentleman did a series of vignettes uh, in the 60s that I saw when I was a kid growing up. Uh, Doodles Weaver, obviously you worked with oh, him. Oh, Doodles Weaver. Yeah. He very was, very he, funny man, very funny oh, man. Yes, he had a picture of Jesus in his office saying, the doodles with love, Jesus, <laughs> you know, from Jesus. There you go, yeah. No, very funny man. It was kind of like he... Uh, the 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 little vignettes I saw back in the '60s were almost like kind of pan, uh, pseudo pantomime. You know, he didn't really say a lot in these, and it was uh, very funny. And then, of course, I learned later on that he had been with Spike Jones uh, back in the day, and so obviously, I'm uh, assumed that it was he- wonderful because we played every vaudeville house in uh, Canada and the United States, and I worked with people like Peter Lorre, and I worked with Stan Kenton. And, um, oh, God, it, it was just wonderful. Al McIntyre, the big band. Sure. Now, uh, uh, one thing, and I know I always uh, ask this of folks, even in private, when, when I get uh, an opportunity to meet someone who was a musician back in those days, but why was it, when the, when, in your opinion, when the war ended in 45, then kind of the big band era kind of, started to wane a little bit. What, what, what are you, your thoughts on that? I mean, they, bands oh, were still around. but trained musicians, and they were fabulous. Yeah. Today, they're trained for four chords on a, you know, guitar. So. <laughs> you but, are. But I'm saying, why, why in the late 40s and in the 50s, the big band era kind of started to uh, not be as popular as it had been in the 30s and 40s? I don't understand. Yeah. The singers were magnificent. I mean, you know, I've worked with uh, Rosemary Clooney, uh, Daggy Whiting, Kay Star. I mean, they were fabulous. Sure. And, I mean, it was about singing and the lyrics meant something. Now they just repeat over and over. I think it's because they smoke too much pot or something. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, oh boy! All right, Kay Ballard joining us here for the hour on Studio Four One One. 
www.kballard.com for more information. And actually, uh, we'll talk about a little bit throughout the uh, interview. Um, Kay has a CD, uh, Kay Ballard sings her favorite songs, and also a four-disc CD, which is kind of a... Uh, 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 almost like in book form of uh, Kay's memoir, My Life in My Own Words with My Own Mouth, exclamation, exclamation. A <laughs> um, couple of things. We're looking at a great shot here. Um, you and to your right, Maury Amsterdam, and I believe that's um, uh, Mr. Ruby. I, I can't think of his name right now. Uh, and then to your left, the famous Lou Costello. Now, uh, do you? Oh, uh, I love them. Yeah, well, tell me a little bit about it. You don't meet too many people that uh, uh, remember knowing Lou Costello. Uh, uh, it looks like this was in the 50s. Uh, was he still with uh, Bud Abbott at, at that time? He certainly was. Yeah, yeah. You know, who's on first, what's on second, sure. what's on third. But I, anyway, they. I was so fortunate to work with comedians that were truly funny, witty. They didn't have to say any bad words. And yet I worked with Lenny Bruce, who I was crazy about. Oh, you worked but with I, Lenny in the 60s or earlier yes, than that? Yes, in the 60s. Yeah. Lenny Bruce. And he wrote a piece of material for me. Really? On the back of a collar thing, you know, when you send your shirt to the cleaners and they come back with a um, piece of cardboard in it. He wrote it on that. And I recorded the uh, parody from autumn leaves and he got the royalty of 40 14 cents and he said i'm not going to cash this check <laughs> he's got, he's going to mess up the accounting by not cashing it but i know a lot of people i'm going to ruin well he said i'm going <laughs> to f up their book i'm uh -oh. not cashing these checks <laughs> He we're, was adorable. We're looking at one of uh, your uh, uh, several albums called K Ballard Live, again with uh, a comedy star of the Broadway hit musical Carnival. This would have been in the early 60s on the old United Artists Records. And uh, you're looking uh, quite fetching there with your balloons. Almost look like you're at a Jimmy Buffett concert, but anyway. That, uh, well, that was at the Bonsoir in New York. I recorded that. There you go. But, now, um, yeah. uh, you, since you brought up Lenny Bruce, what do you think Lenny would have to say with uh, today's po would, politically would, correct humor? Do you think he would uh, he would understand it or no? No, he would not. No, I think I think, a purpose. I think George Carlin would have the same issue, especially although he'd have a field day with what's going on today in our uh, in our world today. <laughs> it's just amazing, yeah. isn't it? Oh, no doubt, no doubt. But even. You know, and they make so much more money than any of us. Dave. Well, you and I talked about that uh, when we did the pre-interview. Was again, uh, you know, it, it seems like and uh, that you know you've done quite well for yourself. And as it amazes me today, the money that's made uh, in many venues, sports, entertainment, and how quick, I've, I've how had an exciting life in show business because I wanted it, and I I worked for very little money mm -hmm. because that's what I chose to do, but today, I mean, even the losers on American Idol, they they make more than Clark Gable did in his lifetime. Yeah, yeah, it's a joke. It, it's, really, it's, you, it, have, you better have a sense of humor today, or you'll die. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Uh, we're looking at an image of uh, your uh, uh, CD that you've put out in recent uh, time here. Uh, Kay Ballard uh, sings her favorite songs, and then there's also a uh, shot of the four CD set, which is uh, basically memories, uh, stories, anecdotes, songs, jokes. And now I'm doing a, a document. That's right. Yeah, Tell us a little bit about that. Keep myself busy. That's right. Well, it's called Medium, Rare, and Well Done. First of all, I'm always connected with food, which is very important to me. And second of all, the reason for this title is I've appeared in every medium of the entertainment field. Every single one. And second, I am rare. Like Carol Channing, who's really rare. We both performed for Queen Elizabeth when she was Princess Elizabeth. I see. Okay. I think that's rare. That's rare. And I think we both did very well. Sure. Carol Channing did much better than I did because she's, well, I, I would say she's, you know, she's just, what, what, what is the word I'm looking for? Unique. An icon, but freely. There you go. 
I'm Look, mean, we're looking at a photo of you back in '57, uh, along with Alice Ghostly. Uh, poor, Ju oh. poor Julie Andrews is scrubbing the floor in Cinderella. That's right. And now that was the the first television version, not the Leslie Ann Warren version I remember. Uh, who is the lady that is seated at the table with you and Alice? That is Ilka Chase. Ilka Chase, okay, yeah. And she was, you know, a very society actress and wonderful. Now, throughout your career, 50s, obviously when television hit its, uh, you know, uh, early beginnings, 50s, 60s, on up through today, uh, we're looking at a shot of you on uh, the old Jack Parr show. Once again, uh, uh, not, not to talk too much about other people, but again, it's just amazing to be able to ask folks uh, uh, like yourself. Uh, that must have been a, a real thrill back in the day. You, Hugh Downs, Jack Parr sitting there at the dais. Uh, oh, they were they were superior, just superior. Who, who was your favorite? If you had to name one or two talk show hosts, what was the, uh, not, not that the others were not pleasurable, but who would you say would be uh, the, uh, probably the best talk show host you ever dealt with? Well, Jack Parr, number one. Yeah. And I think Merv Griffin, number two. Yeah. And, but it, the list goes on. Yeah. No, you, uh, and I know you did. And uh, Johnny Carson. You did several, <laughs> several uh, uh, weeks uh, over a, a four or five, six year span with Mike Douglas, too. Oh, Mike yeah. Douglas. Well, yeah. that, see, that was a separate thing because it was done locally from Ohio, and it didn't feel that important, and yet it was countrywide. But I thought, oh, this is a sweet little show. I. Yes, I hosted that show with uh, Mike Douglas six times. And then you also did it when it was in Philadelphia, correct? That's right. Yeah, there you go. Looking at an image of you. Over 150 talk shows. Yeah. Looking at an Im image of you, uh, maybe you can give us a date on this. Uh, you at the Sahara, Jerry Lewis, Kay Ballard, and down at the bottom uh, with his Y mis uh, misaligned, Shelly Berman. Uh, pretty pretty uh, high, high caliber entertainment there. Oh, yes. And that was At what Bonsoir, the, I worked with, you know, everybody. Oh, sure. Now, um, and the Blue Angel. In those days, there weren't comedy clubs like we have them today. You know, the uh, the comedy store, things like that. Um, some of the ones that opened in the '70s. Did you, by that point, you were doing too much theater and movies That's, and television? Right, did, I was doing, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, did you ever play any of those comedy clubs the the way we know them today? Never. No. No. They, they'd say, you know, come in and do a show at 3 o'clock in the morning, and uh, if you fill the joint, uh, I'll buy you a beer, or those <laughs> things. I, feel, I thought these were, were real rip-offs. Yeah. There you get go. get people to come and really work for nothing. I just want to give the, uh, the folks uh, watching yeah. uh, a, a little bit of taste of some of the, uh, the, the Broadway shows that you were in. Of course, uh, they um, uh, played uh, Helena Troy in the 1954 musical The Golden Apple, uh, where, again, the classic song standard Lazy Afternoon was introduced by Kay. Other uh, raves, uh, Wonderful Town, Carnival, Cold Porter Revisited, and also Come Back Little Sheba, uh, Molly, uh, again, uh, all the way into the... Uh, the God, 70s. You certainly have done your homework. Yeah. Now, you played uh, Dolly Levy in Hello, Dolly. Was that a, a stage show or was that on Broadway? No, that, that wasn't on Broadway, and I did never did Dolly Levy. Oh, no. I see it here. Okay. Oh. Uh, Jerry Herman said, this one's going to be for you. And the minute I saw Carol Channing, I said, that's it. Now, would you say I she's the it. most um, uh, identifiable in your mind? Oh, my uh, God, yes. Yeah. Like, I think Beth Midler's going to do it. I, need, I don't care how many tickets they sold. It still remains very strong in a lot of people's minds. Now, um, Earl Channing did 5,000 performances sure. of Dolly. Would you say that probably the Hollywood uh, moguls uh, wanted someone younger, perhaps, when they cast Streisand in the film version? Yeah, well, I think she was at the point she could name whatever she wanted to do. Right. And but, that was it. Because, I mean, the movie was kind of like lukewarm reception. Do you think lukewarm it would have done... Lukewarm because she was too young. Yeah. Do you think it would have done better had they she given wonder... Carol? Carol Channing is truly great. There you she go. created that role in every sense of the word, and Everybody else could never come near Carol Channing. And, and Beth Midler would do well because she, first of all, she's Jewish. 
and people do very well. But Carol Channing remains the queen. There you go. Concerned. Kay Ballard joining us here for the hour on Studio 411. Uh, Kay's CD uh, sings her favorite songs and also a four-disc CD, My Life in My Own Words, With My Own Mouth. And also uh, uh, talking a little bit about a documentary that will be coming out uh, sometime in the future. Uh, and we are looking at a couple of uh, more of your uh, LPs that you did. Uh, again, a combination of uh, comedy and song, I assume, back in those days. Yes, you know, it's it's an interesting thing, Mary, but at that time, I couldn't do stand-up, really, because there weren't any stand-up girls then, except for Phyllis Stiller after, you know, after me. So, therefore, I did, I, I related my comedy to singing. Mm -hmm. You know, I did a song about Anne Margaret who I later opened for, and I adore her. She's, she's in my documentary. Actually, do you know, uh, to go back to the gentleman we had on recently, Don Trenner was her musical director for 21 years. That's right. Yeah, so that's uh, very, very impressive, very impressive. Um, also, uh, I want to throw in Toddy Fields and a couple oh, of others. Was uh, or Moms Mabley, that, but uh, Joan Rivers a few years later. But, but again, it, very, it was very tough. They very, were all so special. Sure. But very tough in those and days to break in as a stance. Some of them female. that I absolutely cannot stand. And I don't care because <laughs> at the end of my life I can say what I want to say. And, you know, like Sarah Silverman, I guess that's her name. Yes. I think she's talented and she doesn't need all that. But she still does it. I like Joy Behar very much. Oh, Joy is marvelous. I, I think it's great that, uh, you know, she's back on The View. And I used to watch her talk show when she used to have it on uh, uh, evenings. It used to be on about 9 o'clock Eastern. Yeah, good. I did it. I went. You, that's right. Okay, you were there. Look at another LP of yours. Did a lot of albums, Kay, uh, from the uh, Bonsoir in New York City. Kay Ballard Swings. I've never saw such such uh, nice uh, 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 baseball pants in my life, like what I'm looking <laughs> at right there. And I never, ever showed my legs because I was so self-conscious. But on that picture, I did show them. We're looking at an image of you from uh, uh, one of your sporadic films because uh, you you uh, you did more nightclub television and stage work really than you did film in the I long run. I did more stage work. Than yeah. Anything, yeah. But you looking seem at to remember pepper clubs because they're not around anymore. Sure. Um, your, uh, an image of you with uh, the uh, great Shelley Winters from a movie you guys did in 1964. Shelley, oh, what a wonderful human being. Very, uh, very attractive, very attractive lady. I tell you, back, uh, back, uh, and in a this brilliant thing. actress. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two she time. Went, two went, went on a, a casting call, and he, the man or whoever the casting person was, says, "What have you done?" She pulled out a Tony. She pulled out an Emmy. And she pulled out an Oscar. And said, "Now, what? Tell me what you've done." <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, get get on her bad side. I have to ask you about an image here that uh, you're on the right. Uh, the late Jane Mansfield, shortly before her untimely death, a young Liza Minnelli, and you don't see this lady too often, but I think she's still around, Mitzi Gaynor. It's quite an image of the three of you. Uh, uh, oh, Mitzi, yes. Yeah. Mitzi had a great nightclub act, really great. Oh, she used to do television specials about one a year, I remember back yes. in the uh, 70s and 80s, yeah. Liza Minnelli looks like she's she's totally in awe of the the other three of you for sure, but uh, yeah, and that's uh, look that I, well that was 1967. That was shortly before uh, Jane's untimely you death. Know, I, I was around at a great great time in show. Well, you it's took fun. the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, would you pick another time? But I think no. I would agree that you uh, you were in, well, uh, I was in the best good good I, stuff. I worked. I saw the best comedian ever. That was Shecky Green. Did you ever see Shecky? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I always wondered. He he uh, in the uh, early to mid seventies, he was literally on fire. I mean, every time you saw him, it was like a home run. And then for some reason, by the eighties, I don't know, never understood why he kind of like faded away. He was still uh, still is around. Faded away. No, but uh, yeah. that's the wrong word. But it was just I didn't know what happened. It like he lost some momentum there, and then. You hardly ever saw him again. And he's still funnier than, to, yeah. than he ever was. Yeah, and when it, with the few times I've seen him, I'm just like, well, 
you know, the, something I've, I've never been able to pin what happened. I didn't know if it was like a Jackie Mason thing where, you know, he got kind of blackballed because Sullivan thought he did this and did that. And in the end, it really was all, was all, you know, totally nonsense. But, you know, again, but no, Shecky's great. As you well know, uh, that was the uh, the heyday uh, Alan King, Shecky Green. I mean, uh, countless, too many to name, too many to name. Shecky, uh, Alan King used to see, he saw me at the Blue Angel a lot. Mm hmm Hey, you're too sophisticated. You've got to get with the people. He was right, because I was doing very sophisticated material at the time. There you go. Uh, of course, uh, a big thing for me as a, as a young man growing up was 1967. Big break for you, of course. Uh, you get paired with uh, Eve Arden, kind of like a uh, 60s Lucy and Ethel, in my opinion. Uh, and, of course, why? Well, it was a Desi Arnaz-produced uh, NBC sitcom called the mothers-in-law, and uh, um, again... That was a wonderful time. You guys looked like you were having a great time every week. I did, but yeah. and the reason I, we got along so well is she said, when the day I met her, she said, you have a, right, a good side, and I said, good side what? She says, no, a good side of your face that photographs well. I said, I don't know. She said, that's great, because this is my good side. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the only... On the other side. Uh, let me see if I get the names right. Of course, I think I got your name right. Kay Ballard, Roger C. Carmel, Eve That's Arden, and uh, uh, was it yeah. Herbert? Uh, was it Ridley? Ridley? Uh, Herb Rudley. Rudley. Yeah, you guys were the the two couples, and uh, of course, I have to mention too. Uh, uh, Jerry Jerry Vogel uh, was Jerry the uh, was Vogel your son, and correct? Steve Wallace. And uh, and Deborah Wally, who actually I wanted to throw it in because. Uh, she passed away, I want to say around 2000, 2001. She's a native of my hometown, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Well, she was wonderful. Yeah. That, yeah. that was such a happy time. My God, I don't, I don't see how anyone complains doing a series because that's security. That's the only security you'll ever have in show business. And if Mothers-in-Law had run another season or two more seasons, I wouldn't have to work all those years. There you go. Yeah, nice residuals. Yeah. Yes, but I never got any residuals. Now, what happens when? Now, we were just looking at an image of like you know when they when they put it out on DVD, and I just read an article somewhere where it is playing on some cable channel, but I, I don't recall uh, which one. I will let you know when I find out so that you can watch it if you so desire. But uh, I didn't realize in those days that series were still sponsored by, uh, in this case, Procter & Gamble. So it seemed like they carried a lot of weight. Yes. Yeah. And we were taken off the air only because Procter & Gamble insisted they had to have a black show on, and that was Bill Cosby. Right. That was the one where he played a, a gym teacher, correct? Yeah. That's yeah. right, and it failed. Yeah, it was on for two but years, and then, 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 his, then there then he go. did his second one where he was Dr. Oh, Huxtable, yeah, yeah. And, and it was a we're, great success. We're looking at an image of you and uh, Desi Arnaz. Again, here's an interesting character where I have to ask again, uh, so so few people that can say, hey, I worked with Desi Arnaz. Tell, uh, tell us all a little bit about uh, working with that gentleman. Well, working with Desi Arnaz was working with someone with great taste. He edited every single I Love Lucy script he edited edited every single script bars and untouchables, and he was the one who went out and bought bought RKO for $7 million during a lunch hour. And, uh, you know, she was upset about that, but that certainly changed their lives. Now, at that point when you were doing the mothers-in-law, he was divorced from Lucy, but did she ever, I have to ask, did she ever come to the set or you never saw her there? Lucy was in that. Lucy would be here at my house in Palm Springs at Rancho Mirage. She'd come visit every week. Oh, well, this was while the mothers-in-law was on. Yes. Oh, okay. Very nice. She wanted to know what Jesse was doing. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I remember he made a couple of appearances on the show. Of course, he was directing a lot of the, uh, certainly producing uh, the, uh, and actually I read a little tidbit to go back to your buddy Carol Channing, 
uh, as we look at a picture of you on the, uh, the Mike Douglas show from the 1970s. Uh, he actually developed a pilot I was unaware for, Carol, that did not sell. It's unfortunate that uh, they were not able to get to find a, a suitable vehicle for her to do, your, uh, to do a, a, a sitcom or a television show. Well, Eve Arden said toward the end, she says, I think this show would have run a lot longer. And you know why we all said yes? Because we were supposed to get a $250 raise, and they weren't going to do it because, I don't know, Desi said, no, we got to just accept that they don't want us to do it, really, because they want Bill Cosby in that spot. And you, and you guys used to actually do some of the commercials, too. I, didn't re I remember that when I saw a clip that you guys, I guess, out of character would do commercials, you know, look like you were on the set of the show, but for the Procter & Gamble products. Yes. Yeah. And I, I did one that was really wonderful. Where they say something uh, about bugs. I think it was rage or something. <laughs> and I would say this a little baby, old timer, this is how you get rid of bugs. You buy bugs, and off it went <laughs> But it was wonderful. There you go. Well, unfortunately, the, uh, the, the, the show, The Your Mother's in Law, came to an end uh, in 1969. But uh, Kay continued on to bigger and better things. And we're looking at a shot here of uh, working with uh, the uh, uh, one and only Jerry Lewis. Uh, I love Jerry yeah, Lewis. Yeah, and uh, the movie Which Way to the like Front. I love everybody, but I don't. <laughs> I haven't mentioned people that I love. Yeah, and, and actually, I have to tell you a couple of a, a quick story. Um, I was at the um, uh, I was at the St. George Theater in Staten Island recently. I told this story to Don Trenner as well, and I have to tell you because in a little bit we're going to have an image of this uh, woman. Uh, uh, I went to see Darlene Love at the St. George Theater. Oh, Darlene! And, and I didn't know that she wor <laughs> you worked with her in Nonsense on uh, uh, Regional Company. Yeah. Oh, it was wonderful because yeah. we had fun. Now, I was looking and that, at... my best friend is on that, was on that show, Mimi Hines. Oh, Mimi Hines, yeah, yeah. Um, looking at an image, and I don't recall this, it's you and the, the, the great Jimmy Durrani with Monty Hall. Now, was that like from some show that you did, or was that from the actual Let's Make a Deal? From uh, when he had the Lemon Sisters. Okay, that's what it was, right? You guys are dressed, you look like you're dressed in uh, Easter rabbit costumes. That's right. <laughs> so they did a takeoff on Let's Make a Deal. Okay, yeah, when he did the show uh, lasted a year with the, yeah. the Lennon sisters. There you go. You know, when you say all these things, you realize all I've done. It's amazing. Oh, it, it, b believe me, putting this, uh, unlike I think any show that I've done in the uh, dozens and dozens of Studio 411s we've done, uh, her her dossier, my goodness, it, it it could almost be a government document. There's so many things here, and and I've done more than that. I haven't even mentioned some of them. And there's a few that I'm going to try to help you. You uh, in, on your website, which by the way is uh, www.kballard.com, you you say to the uh, folks that view it, you say there's some dates on some things that you either don't recall or don't remember specifically. And I said, I'm going to find out some of those, and I'm going to tell Kay what they are. So I will let you know. You but also Henry Mancini, I remember very well. Yeah. I didn't know Henry Mancini until Don Trenner was on. He was in the uh, Glenn Miller band. That, oh, I know Don Trenner. My yeah. God. But, but, but Henry Mancini started out with, that, with the Glenn Miller band in the early 40s. I didn't know that. Well. Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Looking at a, an image from, I'm going to say, probably the early to mid-70s because of uh, he looks very much like the character he played on the Mary Tyler Moore show, you and Gavin McLeod, Mr. Love Boat himself. Oh, God. Yeah. I, see, I see Gavin McLeod all the time. He lives here. Yeah, yeah. Now, did you ever do the, uh, uh, the Oakdale Theater in Wallingford, Connecticut? No. No, okay. They used to do a lot of stage shows, and also a lot of folks used to play through there back in the, it was kind of in those days it was a a tent theater now it's been it's been enclosed but again well that, i'm sure that i did yeah. it 
But uh, yeah, they uh, a lot of folks. Uh, Robert Preston. I mean, the names are Johnny Mathis, you know, Engelbert, Tom Jones. I mean, the names are endless. Van for Johnson. All of those people that you mentioned, I opened for Tom Jones in Vegas, and I worked with um, Engelbert Humperdinck in yeah. London. It, it's just amazing. Oh yeah, I no. mentioned all these. I really worked with so many people. I have to throw this in too because I didn't I didn't have a, a still of this, but you were in a movie in '76 with uh, another uh, lady who was uh, marvelous. Uh, uh, again, I think she's one of twelve who's won a Tony, a Grammy, an Oscar, and an Emmy. Uh, Rita, Marino? Rita Marino. You and uh, her and Jerry Stillard did did a movie. That was the best time I had. Doing did a that. movie called The Ritz. Yeah, that uh, I remember that well. Uh, here's one with you, uh, uh, a young Jody Foster. Tell me, th did you uh, did you ever think in that back in the '70s that Jody Foster would go on to become absolute? Yeah, she was. First of all, she was both fluent French, and I thought, my word, that girl was talented. Yeah, two-time M right Emmy. Uh, she two used to write me little notes when she was young, like that, and. Because I, I knew her mother. Her mother was wonderful, Brandy. And she would write, say, I'm Jody Foster. Remember me? <laughs> and so when she did her last movie this year, I wrote her and I said, I'm Kay Ballard. Remember I, me? I, I was just going to say, yeah, you write, write her a note, same thing. Looking at a photo of you and talk about another legend here, the, the incomparable Lena Horn. Huh? Tell me, uh, there must Lena have been something. Lena Horn, I've known since 1947. Wow. When I joined uh, Spike Jones, I met Lena Horne. What uh, a wonderful woman. A tough question, but I'll ask again. I'll make it easier. Uh, name three three singers, the probably the best three singers you've ever worked with. Well, I worked with, well, Lena Horne is one of them. Yeah. I would say, let's see. That's a no, tough one because you worked with a lot of Carol people. was one of them. Yeah. can't think. Well, look at the girls I worked with. My God, I worked with Rosemary Clooney. Yeah, I would. I would go with Rosie. I would have to say Rosemary Clooney, and um, absolutely yeah. uh, Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Edie Gourmet was truly remarkable. Yeah, I think and I think un underrated in her own way because sometimes everybody just thought of them and together. And Mark Whiting. Margaret Whiting, yeah, yeah. Margaret Whiting would call you on the phone and say, I'm as restless as a willow in a windstorm. Guess who? <laughs> <laughs> on the way down here, believe it or not, I was listening to one of the uh, national public radio stations, and um, and I said, geez, I'll have to mention this to Kay Ballard, because I said, how ironic that I would hear this this old song, or a couple of old songs. It was actually, you remember the, uh, the King Sisters? Of course. Yeah. They were uh, and the Lennon sisters. Yeah, Never forget them. They but, were not chopped liver, and also the the McGuire sisters. Oh, McGuire, yeah, but no, but I just remember because the the King sisters in the '30s and through the mid '40s, the War Years, there was no King family. It was really just the King sisters. Alvino Ray was like their their musician backup. I remember. And of course, then folks more my generation remember then in the '60s and beyond. Uh, Tina Cole, one of their daughters, and of course the King family, which of course was was kind of like uh, you know the Waltons meet the Duggars, you know, but they they could sing and, and they were very talented people. But I just thought it was kind of interesting as I was driving in. I said, I wonder if Kay remembers the King sisters. There you go. And what about J. P. Morgan? I love her. Oh yeah, a lot of folks remember her also from the Gong Show. But again, they they forget that she was not only funny, but she also was a marvelous singer. She was. I did an album with JP that I'm proud of. Yeah, I've got a photo here, and I and to the best of my knowledge, it's a hard shot to gauge. I see you. Uh, did you know Rock Hudson? Very well. Yeah, I lo I, I thought it was Rock, but I wanted to double check before I I came out and said it. But yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, marvelous actor, and uh, again, uh, lost too soon for uh, uh, obvious, uh, you know. For, and he was, you know. When they make remarks about him, I get so angry because he was a man of great taste. Very, he was not promiscuous or any of those things. And just, uh, I don't know, it, it's a strange world. Yeah. 
And of course, tying in with, with Rock, I have to mention, even though I don't have an even, image of her, but uh, uh, Doris Day, of course, you worked on her show for a year or so, a year or two on the Doris Day yes, show. Yes, well, she was she was such a good actress that I didn't know if she was doing the lines or she was just, you know, talking. Yeah, very, very natural for sure. Uh, go back to Broadway here. Of course, uh, everybody who sees this image knows this gentleman from Dirty Dancing, but of course, countless Broadway shows, oh, as well as uh, Jer Jerry Orbach and... Uh, you and the lovely and talented Gwen Verdon. Talk about an all-star cast here. Well, and then uh, don't forget the lead. I worked with uh, Piper Laurie and uh, what's his name? The one, the, the dancer. Just fabulous. He died. He did Ghost. Uh, what was his oh, name? Oh, uh, Patrick Swayze? No. What was it? Yeah, they uh, did Dirty Dancing and Ghost. Are you talking about uh, Jerry Orbach? Oh, well, Jerry. Yeah. Couldn't be sweeter. Yeah, no, not, and actually, you did a uh, you did a, a an episode of his series, The Law and Harry McGraw. I see. And my, I played the mother of uh, George Clooney. Oh, in that in that episode. Yeah. There you go. That was uh, yeah. I didn't see the episode, but I know I know I saw that on your credits, and a lot of people don't remember that show. It was a spinoff of a Murder She uh, a Murder She Wrote, if I recall. And you know. He was so happy he was going to do that show. I don't know why it didn't go, because he was wonderful. Sure. The Orbach. We were and the girl that did it was wonderful. We were talking about favorite singers. Well, here's an all-star cast. You, Rosemary Clooney, Helen O'Connell, who we left off the list, and uh, Kay Starr. Uh, this, I'm going to say this is no, probably the... We didn't leave that off the list. I worked with them for four months. That was Four Girls Four. Okay. Very good. Very good. Yeah. No, that, uh, believe me. That, Interesting. I've got a wonderful memory. That's one thing God let me have. And and it's all on disc, too. Kay Ballard, uh, kayballard.com or uh, uh, for well, disc most CD. most of it is, but I mean, I've worked with incredible people. I think you should write another book, Kay. Are you uh, tell us. I you, am writing another You are. So then when you finish that, then you will be back on the program. There okay. we go. Okay. Absolutely. But uh, the 40, a four disc CD, My Life in My Own Words. You know, with, I'm just so impressed with your, you know, knowledge of all. This. Well, it was like I told Mother Dolores Hart, I'm great at cocktail parties. I'm, <laughs> I, I have a lot of uh, useless information, but I keep people amused. So I guess it translates well on a talk show. Now so. tell me something. Yes. Do you do anything else after becoming a nun? Uh, who, Mother Dolores, uh, she is still up in Bethlehem, which you mentioned is one of your favorite Connecticut towns, and she is still there. She's like uh, uh, almost 80, and uh, uh, we had her on the show here uh, a couple of years ago, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll be able to have her back on. I if, wonder uh, if she ever regretted. Uh, no, not at all. No, it was a calling, and, uh, you know, again, if you want, I'll hook you up with her. Maybe she can give you a little uh, a little insight. <laughs> no, because that's wonderful. Yeah. Now, do you ever get back east much anymore, or the pretty much uh, stay stay close to the now, California? Right now, I, unfortunately, my life kind of took a, a swing when I had my knee operated on mm -hmm. in '82. So that was oh, I got that doctor in the middle of the next week, but he's not doing it anymore. I think I scared him into. Uh oh! Anymore. Wow. And I, I know you were talking to me the other day on the phone, and I was impressed. Uh, Donna McKechnie uh, uh, called you, and then I heard you say, well, I have to end this nice call with this nice young man. Not so young, but anyway, a <laughs> young man, And because uh, you were going to the gym. So I said, that's marvelous that you still, uh, you still oh, stay I, active. I, go, I wouldn't be walking if I didn't. There you go. There but you I go. should have had the other knee done by a wonderful doctor, and I just was so nervous about what happened with the first one that I didn't, so now I have great trouble walking. Sure, I hear you. Uh, tell me, uh, uh, Joseph Papp, uh, who you had, I think, worked with years before, but we're looking yeah. at an image of you, uh, Rex, a young Rex Smith, and I'm going to say I think it's Maureen McGovern, or I'm not sure, holding a trumpet in her hand, and you guys were in the uh, Pirates of Penzance. Yes, we worked together 53 weeks. And was I correct? That's Maureen McGovern? It certainly is. There you is. go, yeah. I used to call her Twinkle Tonsils. There you go. And, and of course... She's there... a vegan, so therefore she never even owned a box of Kleenex. Oh, my goodness. She's just amazing. <laughs> 
and she's still active. I'm not sure what Rex is doing these days, but in those days he was uh, he was a young uh, uh, singer and actor and uh, doing doing good stuff. Uh, uh, here's an image I'm going to say is from the 80s. Uh, Burt Reynolds might have been down at his dinner theater in Florida. I'm not sure. You and Phyllis Diller. Phyllis with a, uh, looks like close a feather friend. duster on her head. Very close friend. And uh, Burt is still uh, still with us. And uh, he I know he's written a book. You know, I'll have to look. one and, of the classiest men ever. I'll have to look and see. I don't know what happened. But he did a show for me in Vegas for three days when they I did a uh, another thing that I've had unfortunate things happen I hired a producer who knew nothing about television and he uh, it blew it by having cameramen that well the, the film had dissolved because it was so hot in Vegas that, wow um, now we talked anyway. we talked earlier about one of your uh, close friends uh, uh, during your lifetime, uh, Mimi Hines. We're looking at an image Very of close. you as I assume uh, one of the mother superiors, along with um, right. Lee Merriweather, well, the uh, yeah. aforementioned uh, Darlene Love, uh, Mimi they Hines, love and uh, I'm having oh, a... uh, Marsha Lewis. No, not Marsha Lewis. The it was the young lady that was in uh, Mary Tyler Moore. Lee Merriweather, and I'm, I'm blanking on the other one. Oh, Lee Merriweather. No, no, the one she played Ted Knight's wife on Mary Tyler Moore. Georgia Engel, my, my director tells Georgia me. Georgia yeah, yeah. Engel. That's Georgia Engel. Right. A voice came out of the blue in my ear. Thank you, uh, uh, my, my voice of reason. I love that you guys know all these people. Yeah. Tell me, uh, uh, there's a shot here of you and Woody Allen. You guys must go back quite a few years. Yes. He wrote a piece of material that uh, I, I, he worked at NBC when I did. He was and, working probably for Jack Parr in those days, wasn't he? Or and, yes, and I still write to Woody every time I see a movie, and I rate it for him. And I, I thought Cafe Society was one of his best. I think that, uh, and, and you could say the same about Steve Martin, but I think Woody, he won't do it now because he probably feels he's too old, but this was a gentleman that, as great a director as he is, he was a tremendous stand-up. Oh, he was. You know, I mean, there's an album, a double album of his that uh, you play it today, and it's drop dead funny, as as it was back in 1964, as it is today. And it's just unfortunately when he went in that other direction, you know, you lost the, uh, you know, the Woody Allen, the, the you know, the stand-up comic. But uh, anyway. That's uh, just just one man's opinion. Uh, we're coming uh, towards the latter uh, half of our interview with Kay Ballard here on Studio 411. KayBallard.com for more information. Her CD, Kay Ballard Sings, her favorite songs, as well as her four-disc CD memoir, My Life, in my own words, with my own mouth. It didn't say big mouth, but just mouth. But uh, again... <laughs> uh, looking at a shot of you, my goodness, it's like the whole view cast, you and Whoopi. You and uh, um, Rosie O'Donnell, probably back when you did her talk show back in the day. Uh, you you uh, enjoy Behar. I mean, you know all of you. I don't see you with Barbara Walters. What's up with that? Well, Barbara <laughs> Walters, I did the right. I, I think she was ashamed that her father had a uh, Latin Quarter, which, by the way, I work. Um, and she was very kind of cool, but I thought she... Well, she's obviously wonderful. But, you know, they neglect to remember Virginia Graham, who really started Girl Talk. Well, I was going to say to you earlier, that's one of the ones on your list. I used to watch Virginia Graham's show when I was a young, when I was a young boy, probably during summer break, and I loved her show. I absolutely loved her show. I thought, best. She, thought she was absolutely tremendous. Absolutely yeah. the best, because she had different people all the time. Sure. Yeah. And Virginia Graham was my neighbor, and she was one of the most originally funny women. Like, just when she was ill, just before she was going to die, she called me and said, Hey, I'm 86, my body's falling apart, and I just ordered slip covers. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say, how's the superintendent? He just... He just graduated pencil sharpening. That's how he oh is. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. She was so funny and wonderful. We just had an image of you and the aforementioned uh, Carol Channing. So good to see that she's uh, doing well. And uh, 
And uh, uh, again, and another, Mar another good friend of mine. Absolutely, yeah, great picture. You two were like uh, arm in arm there. And of course, gentlemen, as a young man, you played with uh, the uh, now more recent shot of you and uh, uh, superstar actor George Clooney, uh, Rosie's George nephew, Clooney. correct? Yeah. But you know, he, he was a chauffeur for Four Girls Four. Really? Yes. Wow. But you know, another one who's a very good friend of mine and the most brilliant. Louise Lasser. Oh, uh, Woody Allen's ex-wife, yeah. That's right. Yeah, Mary, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Now, I have to ask Mary you... Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. Yeah, I have to ask you, we're looking at a shot of uh, your buddy Donna McKechnie, and forgive me, I'm blanking on the lady and the polka dot. Um, uh, you guys did a show recently together. Uh well, is, we it, is it is it is it Leanne or I'm mispronounce I'm mispronouncing her name. It's you, Donna, and this lady, uh, uh, Leanne. Oh my! Let me look through my notes. Cover for me, Kay, while I look at my notes. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh my goodness! I don't remember who that is. You guys just did a benefit a few years ago. Oh, oh, what the, oh, Lilia Montevec. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's you, another. You know, she's. The only one of her kind. There's no one left that does that kind of performing. So when I was asked to do a show from uh, for Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I said, no, I won't do it. They said, this is for dogs. I said, yes, I'll do it. <laughs> and I want to bring Donna McKechnie and Lilia Montevecchi. And it was very successful. We did it in Albuquerque, and the rest was in Santa Fe. But... Albuquerque was such a sharp audience. And and Lilia Montebecchi is a legend. She's the only French woman that does never lost her accent. And you know, she's just the way she walks, the way she thinks, her singing, I mean, there's no one like her. And that's why I said you've got to photograph her because if she goes which, by the way, she's in the hospital now mm -hmm. in um, Sloan Kettering in New York, but she's going to beat it because she has such wonderful determination. Well, we send her our best, and uh, in the meantime, unfortunately, we've come to almost the end of our interview, but again, uh, I'm going to hold you to that. Kay Ballard, when she finishes her next book, which is going to uh, dish up more uh, great stories and uh, more uh, anecdotes about her marvelous uh, career in its seventh decade. Kay Ballard's The marvelous CD. career with working for scale all At, my uh, life. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. KayBallard.com. It was a great life. Sure. KayBallard.com. Kay Ballard sings her favorite songs. Also, don't forget Kay's uh, four-disc CD, My Life in My Own Words with My Own Mouth. Uh, Kay, it's, it's been uh, an honor and a pleasure. I appreciate you taking uh, some time to uh, visit with us here on Studio 411. And, uh, well, I must tell you, it was an honor talking to you because anyone who has that much information, you know, about doing the research, I just am so impressed. Remember, a cocktail party, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> Cocktail party. You hang there uh, with us uh, for a, a couple of seconds, and uh, we thank you guys for joining here on uh, us here on Studio 411 with the uh, uh, fabulous Kay Ballard, kayballard.com, for more information. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again next time on another episode of Studio 411. For now, as we look at Baby Kay, everyone have a great week. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Oh.